Uh, my name is Frank Gaffney. I'm the vice chairman of the Committee on the Present Danger China, and we are very pleased to be sponsoring a conversation with several of the country's preeminent experts on and most influential voices concerning the coronavirus and its implications for our country, for our relationship with the source of this virus, communist China, uh, the Chinese Communist Party that has inflicted it upon the rest of the world, including, of course, the United States, and also on what we should be doing now to try to both counter this disease, this pandemic, and to ensure that we survive the free republic and the values that it holds dear for the future, for our posterity in the face of the present crisis and what may yet come from it. To join us to discuss this, as I mentioned, uh, we will have some members of the Committee on the Present Danger, China, some other good friends and the colleagues who have been instrumental in the work of the committee, uh, but who are uh, officially not part of it. And I'm going to be introducing them in turn in just a moment. But before I do, I just wanted to say a brief word about the committee, uh, its mission, its uh, historical antecedents, and what we hope to do in the course of today's conversation. The Committee uh, on the Present Danger has had several different incarnations over the years. Perhaps its most illustrious was during the 1970s when a group of national security practitioners, uh, people who are subject matter experts, uh, business leaders, religious freedom and human rights activists and the like came together to try to help one of their members, a fellow by the name of Ronald Reagan, devise and socialize and ultimately obtain a mandate to assure that we had an effective strategy against that era's existential threat to freedom, namely the Soviet communist regime, uh, then running the evil empire, as Ronald Reagan famously called it. Um, the efforts of the Committee on the Present Danger during that period, I think, were instrumental to uh, both the election of President Reagan and his successful execution of the strategy they helped devise. Um, the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, inspired by that experience, um, a new group of similar skilled individuals has come together to try to help contend with our time's existential threat to freedom. It is not a partisan group. Uh, we are seeking to advance policies that will help our country contend with the Chinese Communist Party, what it's up to, its ambitions, and the present and growing danger that they represent to all of us. Um, this particular event, our first virtual threat briefing, if you will, is one of a series that we have now executed going back to March of 2019 for the purpose of raising awareness among the American people about the challenges that we're facing from China. Um, they seem to be fairly obvious to us all in the wake of this coronavirus epidemic, but um, we're not so clear in the months that have preceded it. And we have been seriously pursuing uh, not just heightened awareness, but also engagement on the part of the American people uh, in this election season, most especially in the choice that we have to make in terms of will we finally recognize and contend effectively with the challenge posed by Xi Jinping and his colleagues in the Chinese Communist Party who seek unmistakably and now increasingly avowedly to displace this country as the world's dominant power and do so perhaps with great harm to us, to our, uh, as I say, constitution and freedoms and to our people. 
that seems to be pretty obviously the case at the moment when you look at what the coronavirus has been inflicting upon uh, most obviously and uh, initially the people of China, but now people all over the world and what it is doing to our society here at home. Uh, but we believe that it needs to be understood both in the immediate context and more broadly as indeed uh, Ronald Reagan's famous phrase, an existential threat to freedom.